This is Middle Class Matt from don'tbythehype.blogspot.com and my YouTube channel is NC Sports Genius One. And you can follow me at the same name on Twitter on NC Sports Genius One. I'm wearing my Kelly the Ghost Pavlik shirt again because he is fighting this week, June 8th, 10 o'clock on ESPN2. Now, Kelly Pavlik is a huge name to be fighting on ESPN, but there's a reason for that. He's, he, he is used to or accustomed in the past of, in his career to fight on pay-per-view or Showtime or HBO. I don't know if he ever fought on Showtime, but that caliber of fighter. And he's sort of been reduced now to fighting on HBO. Uh, and the reason is is because he's had a lot of out-of-the-ring problems with alcohol, substance abuse. Um, he's had a two-and-a-half-year layoff, and he had some tough fights he lost. Now, his big wins were against Edison Miranda, who he destroyed. Um, and I believe Edison Miranda was probably the favorite. And then he gets Jermaine Taylor, who I know he was the favorite, and he picked himself off in the second round. I picked himself off the mat in the second round, came back to destroy Jermaine Taylor, knocking him out. His, and Jermaine Taylor's eyes rolled right back in his head. I remember the knockout. Still to this day, one of the few times I've ever jumped up and down during a fight. Then he had some tough losses. One to Bernard Hopkins, who sort of kind of tricked him, played some mind games, lured him in with money to a weight class he wasn't comfortable with. But there's no shame in losing to Bernard or losing to Sergio Martinez, the other fighter he lost to. Sergio Martinez was quick, and he's a slick fighter. Kelly Pavlik's not that type of fighter. But Kelly actually had a chance against Sergio, but then he had a cut that busted above his eye and bled, and he couldn't see, and his trainer... Uh, couldn't uh, patch it up. They didn't do a real good job, so he bled in his eye. Really, He actually could have rematched him, and I never understood why he didn't, because I really felt like if it wasn't for that eye, Pavlik would have given him a hard time. Maybe he thought that he was outclassed by Sergio Martinez. But anyway, Pavlik was a big fighter, fighting those big names like I just named in boxing. And then because of his substance abuse, because of his alcoholism, and different things that have happened in his life, those tough losses that I just named, He's now been reduced to fighting on ESPN2. This is uh, kind of a step down from fighting in, in HBO, on HBO or Showtime, especially pay-per-view. It actually will be the, kind of, the fight where it happens June 8th, the day before uh, Timothy Bradley and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao fight, which is going to be the big main event on pay-per-view. So it's kind of a fight that if people in Vegas want to go see a fight on Friday night to tune up for that one, they can, come see, they can go see Pavlik. It's going to be a real treat for us fight fans because to see a fighter of this caliber on ESPN2 is amazing. Uh, we're not going to have to pay money. We're not going to have a special premium channel. We'll be able to tune in and watch a fighter like that. And I can't wait. And I think any boxing fan out there should be tuning in to be able to see a fighter on regular cable television like this. Pavlik is the kind of fighter that anybody can pull for. He is from a working class family from a working class town. He's from Youngstown, Ohio, Old Mill Town. And he comes from a town that's as tough as steel, and he has hands heavy like hammers. Now, when you first watch Pavlik fight, nothing really sticks out. He's not a slick fighter, doesn't have great hand speed. So he's somebody that everyone can kind of relate to, even though he really is a great athlete. Used to play minor league baseball, has a great reach, great height. But when he gets in there, he approaches boxing with a working man's kind of mentality, throwing jabs and straights, straight hands. Um, down the pipe, and he works on his opponent like, a, like a, a man would work on railroad spikes driving them in. He reminds me kind of a log splitter, the way that it comes down, and it doesn't have a lot, of, it doesn't seem to be moving at a great speed, but once it hits the log, it splits it wide open, and that's what he's done to many of his opponents. So, I'll be pulling for Kelly Pavlik. He's got a new trainer, well, relatively new. He switched in the last few years. He switched to Robert Garcia. His former trainer, Jack Lowe, went along with sort of the kind of persona that Kelly has as the working class man. Jack Lowe has a crew cut, mustache, uh, looks like a blue collar rock worker, is a blue collar worker, actually was laying asphalt and paving driveways when he was training Kelly Pavlik. He's been training him since nine, and they departed a few years ago. And it's going to be interesting to see if Kelly has progressed with his new trainer, Robert Garcia. So I'll be watching for that. So, Kelly Pavlik is the kind of guy that could be a star in boxing. He was a star in boxing, and I hope to see that happen again. So, I'll be tuning in to the fight June 8th, 10 o'clock, ESPN2, to see Kelly Pavlik take on Scott Sigmund, someone I don't know much about, 
But if I had to make a prediction, I'd say Kelly Pavlik is going to beat him. Kelly Pavlik himself said that this guy looks like he fights most of his fights out of the YMCA. So when the guy, he Kelly Pavlik should be hyping him up. But I don't think he has any real great desire to do that because Scott Stigman has been talking so much junk. So I'd love to see Kelly Pavlik, Kelly Pavlik come back and restore himself as sort of the boxing star he was, the sort of people's champ that everyone loved him to be, the working class hero. See if he'll put his hard hat on this Friday and win another fight. And I'll be tuning in to see it. I hope you will be too because it's going to be a great fight. This is Middle Class Matt from Don't Buy the Hype. And I'll see you next time.